break. Make it yours. Welcome back, one and all. Did you miss us? We are back for the fourth game of the day. I am Penguin. He is Dagda. And we're going to be bringing you our last game of the day. But we're quickly coming up to the halfway point of day one. I know. It's been absolutely nuts. Where did the time go? <laughs> it's been very quick games and very exciting games as well. So I'm excited to see now if I'm all life can kind of live up to that as they go up against Infinity Esports, the LLA representative. Yeah, both teams coming off of a loss of their first win, or first game, excuse me. <laughs> uh, they're looking for their first win. And we got to say, that yes, Humble Life are in fact favoured in this, but you can never count out the playing teams. We've seen it time and time again. They they have a little spice. Yeah, especially when you're looking towards like Infinity Esports as well, like a team that is very aggressive in the early stages. And I mean, Humble can struggle when they fall behind. So if Infinity Esports can make those early plays stick, maybe they can make it work. But unfortunately, they couldn't find that success against Red Cannons. And now Humble Life, they're going up against one of the play-ins favourites here. Yeah, we'll see if they're able to make an upset of Humble Life can get their play-ins towards tournament back on track. We are jumping straight into picks and bans. Cody should not get into LeBlanc pretty much the entirety of the play-in stage. He's going to be banned against them constantly as we do see the Aurelia banned away from Morgan and Trophy and of course the Lucian which we saw in game one. Yeah, Lucian incredibly strong for White Lotus and we're starting to see that adaptation, right? It was the LeBlanc, Zoe, Shin Zhao banned away the last time. It's LeBlanc, now the Lucian. We'll see if Zoe or the uh, Shin Zhao get banned away. One of the big things for um, the Zoe ban kind of indicates that you want to play Rise. Cody loves playing this Zoe into the Rise, trying to keep him lane, have decent wave clear against it. So maybe Homo want to try and go that and look for the rise for Chovy. But I mean, you're already looking at Infinity banning away Aurelia and Trindamir, two of the big picks that we saw Homo get success in the early stages in their game against LNG. Yeah, and Infinity are going to have to find out something new for the jungle as well. Solid Snakes Jarvan gets banned away. And now Infinity have themselves one last ban before we go into the first power picks of this draft. And honestly, they could keep going into Chovy, but the man has a champion ocean. He can play pretty much anything. If we include today's first game, he is 22 unique champions between this entire summer and now. Yeah, it's kind of insane how much Chovy has played. We're going to get the Camille ban, though, away from Morgan. This has been kind of the one one or two big picks that we saw Home on Live 10 towards was, like, the Camille Renekton for Morgan, with Renekton taken off the board. Camille is gone now as well. So it will be the Lee Sin locked in here, more than likely going towards Winner in the Jungle, but we still could see that flexibility in towards the lanes. Yep, absolutely. Could be flexed into either top or mid if they see the matchup fitting for it. And now, Infinity, you've got an opportunity here to see what you want to go for. Still plenty on the board. Still plenty of options to go for, but it's about what you want to prioritize. Yeah, and that's where my kind of curiosity comes in here, right? Because we obviously got the big power picks in the jungle, like the Kiana has seen a lot of play. We got a little bit of the Zed, but there's still a huge amount of those picks that you can go towards. But I mean, pretty box standard here, at least from what we're starting to see, is that Misfortune coming in on the red side, and it's going to be paired once more with this Amun move. Yeah, we got the Curse of the Sad Bullet Time potentially coming out again and again. We saw from Peace in the last game, it is incredibly powerful when you find those opportunities. But I got to say, if two people are going to be able to get out of those. It's got to be the Ezreal and the Lee Sin. They are so good at just jumping themselves away from danger. Yeah, and gives you the opportunity to try and play away from that with this Ezreal pick, right? Death can stay in the bot lane, Vista look for the roams, try and unlock Chovy, try and see if they can make some plays happen in those early stages. Um, otherwise, Infinity can try and play through this strong bot side. So I think definitely trying to play away from the bottom lane will be the game plan here for Hanwha. As Infinity, they've just locked in the Xin Zhao, strong early game jungler once more for Solid Snake. And this is where Infinity find comfort, right? Solid Snake trying to interact with the lanes early and set themselves up for success. Another strong jungler as well for those team fights. So maybe we just all in with like Bugax taking something like the Nara in the top lane and look to just take, hey, we can have decent push top, but also be a menace in team fights. Yeah, I think the big thing I want to see from Solid Snake this time is to have the rest of his team with him. The last time around we saw him against the Red can uh, Canids is that it was just Solid Snake kind of on his own on the backside. He was like, I, I got in, where's everybody else. So what can the side of Infinity add into this composition to really help out their jungler? But the Orianna locked away, the Nar being taken off by Hanwha Life as well. So definitely focusing a little bit more on those subtle lanes from both sides. Yeah, and I'm convinced here that Infinity are going to try and keep the keep the counter pick for uh, Cody in this mid lane. One of the big things that we've seen from Infinity is not giving a huge amount of resources to Cody. He's been very self-sufficient, but you're up against Chovy. Chovy is so damn good in lane and he's going to need some help if he's going to try and have any sort of impact on the map. So looks like you will see them try and keep that counter pick for Cody, try and help him out a little bit in that regard, but at least see what Chovy's going to have in store before they lock anything in. 
And they are just hovering right now. We'll see exactly where they want to go with this last pick. They've got a couple more seconds to go, but it looks like it is going to be the top side that they lock in before anything. But no, they're going to go straight for the Zoe. Like you mentioned, something that Cody's very comfortable in. Yeah, one of his most played. He loves this pick. Um, crazy, crazy strong. And, and just an easy one, right? You're like, right, it's not going to fall into too many issues in this mid lane. Just decent clear, keep it nice and simple. And then look to have that big impact when you're able to play off the terrain around these objectives. And looks like uh, we're just going to match push with push. So Chovy might go back towards the Azir here. He's played this a lot in the LCK. And if that's the case, I mean, Azir made Ezra bot. We're looking at a little bit of a... a Slow, I'm going to say, early game. A slower <laughs> tempo in the early game coming out from Hanwha. But again, we talked about it last time in, in, in the game against LNG as well, is that this is their comfort zone. This is what they enjoy doing. This is how they find themselves getting those wins that they need. It's all about the slow choke out, you know, suffocate your opponents and make sure that you're the ones coming out with the advantages. And I honestly, maybe Morgan goes back. <laughs> well, we'll go back towards her neck. And so as you highlighted, right? One of the two big picks that we've seen um, Morgan go towards in LCK, especially in playoffs, was the Camille and was Renekton. Now, Renekton falling out of favor with all the changes to his stun, right? Not giving as much time, making it a lot more difficult for a jungler to try and play around the Renekton. And um, also just the way his combo functions a little bit um, easier to deal with if you're the opposition. So we'll have to see how Morgan will be able to perform on this Renekton, but very, very standard homo life draft here. Yeah, honestly, I've never seen it so, so oh. LCK, but <laughs> locked and loaded is the Graves. That could be a Graves top or an Aziz yeah. out top, either one. We've actually seen the Graves a lot more in the top lane. It started mid and then people are like, let's just go for a top side. And when you are able to go towards the Yomus, the Eclipse, you become obnoxious to deal with in that top side. Really difficult for the um, Renekton to actually deal with as well, because you can take like Phase Rush, you can start to move around in that top lane matchup. It's very difficult to keep up as a Renekton and, um, just hard to get the push. It's just constant shove, start to chip away at the turret, and Bugax will have to see how he does bringing out this Graves on the top side. Yeah, first time we're seeing it on the World Sage in 2021, and this is going to be a big test right now for Infinity. I also feel like Hanwha Life, you can't just sit on your laurels. If that Graves gets ahead, if that Zoe's able to find those trouble bubbles and get those picks off, this could become a bit of a shaky game for you. Yeah, but once more, it is about like, hey, heavy, heavy burst. If you don't get these big Amumu ults off on key targets, the game plan kind of goes out the window. You've got a lot to fight back with as Hanwha Life. So definitely Infinity Esports going to be looking to try and get control of this game early and see if they can find these fights at like the Rift Heralds, early Dragons. Do anything you can to force Hanwha Life into fights early. But of course, the longer this game goes on, the more we tend to lean towards the LCK fourth seed, the Azir, the Ezreal, hell, even the Lee Sin to an extent, just being able to set up so nicely is going to be such a pain for Infinity to try and deal with if they let it to just slide off to the, into the distance. Yeah, and that's one of the big things here. I feel like there's going to be a hell of a lot of attention on top side, right? You've got the Lee Sin Renekton set up. Let's see if we can try and play through that. But on the opposite side, um, you want to try and keep this Grave safe. So certainly for Infinity Esports, solid sake. I want to see some time up here getting Bug Axe into a decent spot. And then you can always look to use White Lotus and Ackerman, who should just be able to pick up their own advantage through the strength of this bot lane at those team fights. We are on to the Rift. Fourth game of the day here in Group A. We start to see who is going to be establishing themselves towards the top and who's starting to sweat near the bottom because these games will start to rack up very, very quickly. You only get four. It's not exactly an easy win. You have to pick up wins when you can. And this for Hamwa would definitely be one of the games that they would want to pick up right after dropping to LNG in what was a very, very close game. They're probably going to be coming out a little bit angry. So we'll have to see what they're able to do. Chovy, though, taking very aggressive... Um, Rune choice coming in towards the mid lane, going towards that summon area. Definitely going to be looking to try and have control of this mid lane and see if he can be that factor that he was in those regional finals. Move around the map, have some sort of plays on this Azir. See if he's able to make it happen. Of course, the Surima Shuffle, if you will, or Shuffle even, if you will, and the Emperor's Divide. Very powerful tools just setting up the rest of your team. You can push them all into a Morgan uh, Renekton. You will be feeling very, very happy with yourself as Bugax trying to be a bug to the side of Hanwha Life as he's not quite able to get himself up the ramp. Morgan playing fairly decent bodyguard, and they're going to be able to back themselves away. So both junglers are going to start on the top side and most likely pathing towards the bottom. Yeah, and it's interesting to see because I feel like for Solid Snake, you want to try and um, play down, obviously, around White Lotus and Ackerman in these early stages. You should have Kobe with, Cody with sorry with Push in the mid lane as well. But the but for Willer, I actually assumed he would start bot and start to path up topside towards Morgan. But in fact, going to actually follow the path you know, of Solid Snake down. And we'll have to see if he can actually contest one of these scuttles. See if he wants to go for a Hanwha Life. 
And a decent early game in terms of objectives against LNG. We're able to pick up the first Dragon, first Rift Herald as well. So they know how to move around the map pretty quickly and pretty efficiently. I'd be curious to see now exactly where these two junglers end up being. But for Infinity, they need to try and, as I say, put a, you know, a stop to the gears in motion. Yeah, well, Bugax, at least from the get-go, is doing a really good job here, right? You spotted, hey, we had a ward on the red buff. No lease in for Home All Life. Cool. Bugax is going to crash second wave, get a little bit of chip damage, try and deny Morgan some of the CS. Then with the bounce back, shove in again on the fourth wave, make sure that he's continuously keeping up the pressure here and preventing Morgan from trading aggressively. Now, Solid Snake, though, showing in mid against Chovy. Yep, showing in mid. You see Chovy putting down the Sand Soldier so he can just shift himself all the way back. And the, looks like it's going to be a quick move here from Solid Snake, just saying, look, I'm here. You can't get anything off, off of Cody underneath the tower. But Morgan, I feel like he can go for this trade. It's a bit dangerous to go for that one. The Graves, once he gets a little bit of distance between you, will just keep peppering you down. Yeah, and one of the things that we saw a lot was like Renekton kind of going right. Hey, I can just trade effectively. I'm always going to have control on this top side. But as we started to see the shift in the meta and things like this, Graves top have come out. You're not kind of kingpin anymore in that top lane for Renekton. So Morgan, we have to make sure that he's trying to keep even here against Bugax and not over aggressing and having Bugax win out in these trades. See Def recognizing he's no real danger with his jungler off to the side as Bugax again just going to try and trade this one out. Will not get the end of the line second proc, but both these top laners down to about 200 AP and it's getting a little dicey. <laughs> yeah, at least for Morgan, he's got the heal, right? You can, there you go, use the cold of the week. You end up getting a good amount of health back, but um, not the same for Bugax. He's got the free footwork, so he'll have to reset and come back, which gives Morgan a little bit of a shove out. So nice trading by Morgan, which actually gives a little bit of attention here for Willer, who can maybe get this top score. So yeah, seeing the TP going in, like you said, Bugax having to use that one there. Morgan getting some late vision down before he does get his reset in. Should be fine to the TP to the lane if he's feeling like he's under any pressure. But again, good little movements here. And actually, Lee Sin just moving up towards that top scuttle just now. So eventually we'll get the equal trade as we see the TP being burnt by Morgan. And that's going to be enough to kind of just secure the top side of the map here for Hanwha. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the game plan is here. Because you have Wheeler top side. I was looking at Chovy getting the reset. He has the TP advantage, right? Cody hasn't got access to that teleport now. So always an option for Hanwha to try and use the push that Chovy has made. Try and make a play top towards Morgan. But looks like with Solid Snake having reset and coming back onto the map himself, Hanwha don't want to go over aggressive on this top lane just yet. This they're going to see two... Two lads recalling, gonna let one of them go as he stops the recall of Ackerman on this Amumu. And again, just trying to be in nooses, trying to keep them along in this lane because you went Death went tier on the, on the Ezreal, so it's actually a lot better for him to stay as long as possible with as little items as they can. Yeah, and I mean, they're doing a really phenomenal job here as Hanwha. Again, like Morgan, before he reset, got that ward up at the uh, the Krugs for Solid Snake, so spotted out where the jungler is. So you can always see Hanwha playing off of like the information that they have available. Def shoves in bot with Vista the second they get Vision top. Cool, we know we're safe. Let's move off of that. But the big thing that I want to see here is like, how is Wheeler going to like desync himself from Solid Snake? Because right now they're just like holding hands the whole way through the jungle, skipping along beside each other. But that's not what you want. As this leasing, you want to find that opportunity where Solid Snake is bought, and then you can try and make this big play top. It's why they're actually moving Vista up right now as they might try to make something happen. Oh, well, be careful, Cody. You are level six right now, but Willer is just hovering to the side. Will uh, be able to stop this recall as well, unless he's in shot. That he's going to be able to get himself out, no problem at all. And even with a jungler around, I don't feel like Infinity want to take that 2v2. Yeah, but they don't have vision of where Hama life right now. They will with Willer showing, but you can see Bugax, he hits it back all the way off that turret because he was worried about that dive on the top side with the wave crashing. So Morgan doing a really good job of punishing this now as Bugax will get some of the wave, but level advantage and a plate already going to Morgan. Solid Snake sneaking his way now into this bot side. Will be spotted immediately though by that ward. As soon as he walks up to it, it's pretty much confirmed. Unless he's actually snuck around the corner, so they didn't actually see him. Interesting. I thought that would have had enough vision, but no, they do not know. And Solid Snake is there, but they're going to have a pretty decent guess now with the bot lane gone missing. Yeah, especially with White Lotus. Might have just pipped onto that ward. So you can see here how much well aware of this. Now, I don't think you need to over-aggress towards this. Just give it, like... It's one dragon, but Willer wants to see if he can steal it. Uh, Chovy hasn't got the push right now, so it's no. going to be a 4v3. So Cody putting himself in a position. White Lotus not quite got the bullet time just yet. They're going to jump straight in onto Willer. TP going to be committed. That's Chovy getting himself on the other side of this fight. Death going aggressive as they look to try and secure this dragon. It's all it's like flashing away, but he falls to the ignite. First blood going up to Hanwha. They trade one for one. Flash, flash. Ackerman in a little bit of trouble. They don't land the paddle star. And Cody not going to be able to trade it back. Two kills for a dragon. Definitely feeling like it's more 
Han were life favored. Yeah, it, the TP from Chovy to the bot side meant that you could actually group up as Hamwon, look for these plays, and nicely done. Picking off Solid Snake, not able to uh, find any opening here as Infinity without that level six available. So Hamwon punishing. Hamwon punishing. Cody in a lot of trouble right now. He's losing a lot of his health bar, not even hitting anything. The fancy feet of Chovy just knowing exactly where he needs to stand, and that's just a great trade there for the Hamwon life mid, mid laner as Bugax. He's just getting punished right now. He's just getting pushed back. He cannot take this 1v1. Yeah, but you can see, right, why Chovy is so difficult to play against in this mid lane. He's at 10 CS lead at 15. His death takes a good chunk of his health bar. Um, in more than half his games. Like, a 10 CS lead at 15 is absolutely insane. He's the highest average CS across the board. Um, if you look at any point in the game, and averages like 450 goal difference at 15 just himself. It's insane what he can do. And look at Solid Snake in this replay as well. He just takes so much damage. Him and Ackerman, the two people who died, were half health before it began. Yeah, and you can see Death trying his uh, best here, right? He's right up in the face of Infinity, getting so much damage out. And it's just unfortunate. They stick around that bit too long. They tried to commit to the play, but Cody not really getting much damage off. Same when you look towards White Lotus. The level six from Infinity is where they really come online, but trying to fight level four on your Mumu, not going to have the same impact need that bullet time, you need that Curse of the Sad Money, you need that lockdown available to you so you can get the poke down with Cody, so you can just move, re you know, affirm yourself with the AD carry and White Lotus get himself into a much better position. So now, yes, you get the dragon, but you do lose a gold lead, about two and a half thousand, just a little bit under as you see Bugax just getting punished every single time. Morgan get a slice of dice into him, he takes about half his health bar. Yeah, and this is just Morgan being able to play off the advantages that we talked about earlier for Homewood, right? Getting that vision control, playing in the dark, making sure that Bugax couldn't be safe underneath this tower. And Hama, even though you don't get the actual commitment topside, just them hovering was enough for Morgan to get this lead. And now Hama, again, like a 2,000 gold lead at the nine minute mark. And we're not seeing much from Infinity. They want to try and look for these fights at the uh, Rift Tower, but still level five at White Lotus, still level five on Ackerman, which is why Willer has been able to take that objective without Infinity being able to put up a response. Again, solo lanes going very well for Hanwell Life. They got themselves a 10 CS lead pretty much across the board in terms of those lanes. Chovy trading very effectively into Cody. And this slow type of game is totally fine for the side of Hanwell Life. We talked about it. The longer the game goes on, the more items you get onto this Ezreal and Azir, the harder it becomes to set up your Wombo for Infinity. Infinity need to be the ones making the aggressive moves. They need to be the ones looking for some kind of an advantage because they're just going to slowly lose the game then. Yeah, and their biggest hope for that is the Dragons, right? You've already got one. Whatever about the fight going a bit skew ways, at least you've got one dragon. So if you can start to power through these, like pick up the next one in two minutes, you can very quickly get a soul onto the map where Hamon need to fight you. And if you set up correctly, as we talked about, so much burst damage on Infinity could find pretty much anyone on Hamon Life's help bar gone completely askew. So maybe Infinity can start to play through that, but Willard again, good job getting vision and just keeping pressure on Solid Snake. So it's like not quite able to keep his own jungle safe. And we will see about a three or four a three camp lead going now in favor of Willer as uh, Chovy for Hanwha Life could push in. And again, a 500 gold lead here for Chovy. You're looking at the, the junglers, but 700. You're looking at top lanes, but 400. It, it 500 in the bot side. It's not massively significant, but it's enough to just make you question. They're going to get the mythics first. They're going to get their, their self set up and get more wards on the map. It's those little small moments that just make Hanwha Life so scary for a team like Infinity, where they are fine to just keep those small advantages and make them into bigger ones later. Yeah, it's also just the efficiency we've seen from Willer, right? He's been able to continuously farm, have some pressure, but he's never had to fully commit to a play apart from like fighting at that dragon, right? So he's just been farming the whole time where Solid Snake's been hovering, trying to support his team. It means that he is behind when it comes to CS. Willer again, you can see forcing him back. And if Solid Snake's not able to have impact in these lanes, it becomes really difficult for Infinity to find these advantages. Even now you can see pushing mid for Chovy, fantastic. They hover down towards bot side. Infinity have to dip away from this turret. Well, this is gonna, back away from the trouble bubble, knows that he does not get, have to get caught in that, and otherwise it could lead to Infinity getting something, as Hanwha Life do get the Gore Drinker finished up onto Willer, and that's going to be a big power point right now. You want that Gore Drinker for your Zinzo to be able to trade effectively, because we see how powerful it is, how much health you can get back off of it when you're in those big 5v5 five five team fights. Yeah, I think right now, though, Hanwha are going to full commit to this bot side. Rift Herald about to time out, Chovy having shoved in mid, um, and I love that they're doing this. This is... Um, Gonna basically net them the spot lane turret with no sort of response from Infinity. And this is what we haven't seen a huge amount from Homwa is basically like using this Renekton in the top side to just be its own thing, cause a bunch of ruckus. They've oftentimes tried to play towards Morgan and get a bunch of um, 
a farm, bunch of um, resources put into this Renekton. Instead, they're just like, cool, Renekton's winning anyway. Let's just invest in Deft on the bottom side and make sure we're winning across the board. Bogax is so low right now. You might pop the dominance. Yep, there it is. Can he get himself behind the turret, though? Morgan in a little bit of trouble. Will get the Q off. Flashes away. Oh, still no. dies. <laughs> it's a one for one on the top side. That is a gift to the gods from Infinity. All right, we just cut it, right? We just yeah. cut it off right there. Don't talk about Morgan, it. <laughs> look, you got the solo kill. That's what matters. Good job. Denies a bunch of that wave as well. So, again, Morgan full control on this bot side. Unfortunate. Just a bit of a late flash, but still. Hanwha, winning top, winning bot. Chovy's got full push mid and the 14 CS lead. It's just up gold across the board for Hanwha. Hanwha just slowly but surely now 4,000 gold lead, pushing themselves forward. But I feel like Infinity are saying, look, we can force around this dragon. This is where we're going to be strongest. Get those big AoE team fights. And now knowing that there's no flash or ultimate onto Morgan, they've got a little bit of help with it. It's going to suck that Infinity don't have any mythics completed, though. He just got Bug X1 completed, but like no Eclipse coming through for White Lotus, Solid Snake not having his um, his own Gore Drinker. Whereas you look across at Hanwha, everyone's got their mythic finished. And that's why you try to move in here as Infinity, you're like, we we just don't have the item spikes that we need right now to contest this. Yeah, as well, you have Morgan just hovering towards that bot side before returning to the top. So recognizing, look, I can hover, I can be around just in case. No one's going to be able to stop me. And just means there's a free dragon going over to Hanwha. So they get themselves a second Drake of the game. They still have themselves a 4,000 gold lead. And now we want to see what can the side of Hanwha do with these small advantages. As you said, the, the Mythic's finished up just gives them such a massive power spike that Infinity can't walk into them until they finish them. And Infinity haven't done anything with the time that was dedicated to Hanwha towards the dragon, right? We don't have vision control going into topside. Can't really dive Morgan. He's a bloody Renekton. You're not, that's not going to go well. So instead, you get Hanwha, get to have their play on the bot side. Now they've looked to reset. They're going to be here in time for the Rift Herald. And uh, Infinity just aren't really getting their chance to play a turn in this game. Losing out every single time. It's like Uno, skip a turn, skip a turn, skip a turn. You're not quite getting the reactionary play you want. Feels very unfun. As we see now, the rest of Infinity are in towards this mid lane. There is a Rift Herald just spawned, so that could be the next objective they look to go for. They have got the Eclipse, and finally the Gore Drinker finished up for White Lotus and Solid Snake, respectfully. We are going to see the TP coming in towards that top side to try and keep that pressure, and Infinity move towards Shelly. Yeah, so they do manage to get the quicker reset, moving in mids, and now getting control, but look at where Chovy is, right? They don't actually know where he is, so you can always just gift this Rift Herald across. You don't have to commit as Hanwha, and always have Chovy try and take a bot lane turret, but it looks like they are going to move in and look to try and pressure onto this mid lane, which means Infinity, once more, have got to come back and fight mid. Cody doesn't have a lot of mana either, down to about 25%, so the poke that's just not landing is being wasted and those resources are going away. As we can see now, Willer forced to safeguard away from the rest of his team. We will see the kick being actually mitigated there by the portal jump as they go in. Ackerman catches out Deft, but goes with him and therefore can't get anything else out of him. So everyone just backing away, almost finding engages Infinity. I feel like they know they're on a the timer. They're looking for something. Yeah, Bogak still has push in, in top side, which is why they're maybe looking for Ackerman. Oh, they're going to look for Ackerman in the mid lane, but there's the bullet type coming out to stop Chovy for going in for the Shifting Sands and the Emperor's Divide. A lot of things being burnt right now. Flashes, dashes, everything whatsoever. There's the ultimate. Has been tanked up by White Lotus and won't do the full damage. There's going to be the Crescent Guard coming out for Solid Snake. Is he going to try and jump in? But now Drowsy going down onto Willer. Can they commit any more to this fight? I don't think they can, but here comes Bogax right off the side with a TP in the middle of it. Bogax versus the world. He's looking for Death. Who will get over the wall? They flash in on the Death. Death will fall. That's going to be the first kill of this fight. Now Cody can jump in. It's the Amumu for the Ezreal right now. Willer so close to Death. Finally will fall down as Morgan finds himself a little bit all alone. Chovy tries to get him away, but he just cannot. And a strange turn of events. Infinity find the fight, they find the damage, and they find the kills. It may not have been clean, but it was effective coming through from Infinity. They managed to pick off so many different members of Hanwha. You even got Bugax, who now able to get a couple of kills for himself. We'll get this Rift Herald as well, and you can take over in these lanes. It is a huge shift in momentum as we have a look at the Axe replay. This was so scrappy, and everyone had used everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you see the Amumu's already looking at the back. Ackerman's like, I don't want any more of this, but getting that much damage onto Willer, and look at Bogax here. Perfect positioning, manages to get a ton of damage on towards Deft, who's out of mana himself, so he's forced to flash away into the waiting hands of Solid Snake. Chow. It's Infinity perfectly setting up all the moving parts to entrap Homwa, and yeah, I mean, Chovy's there, right? But he wasn't I mean, able to get in. Yeah, there was just nothing that he could do, so Infinity 
phenomenal job to find the fight that they needed. And they're able to take down Morgan as well when he's by himself, when he's just a lone crocodile. Look at the damage, Cody, my son. That was incredibly well played. That's why we see a band against him, right? He is a phenomenal Zoe player, and we're seeing it in these team fights. But this is what we talked about for Infinity, right? Like, so many of their advantages come from early skirmishes. They're not about trying to, like, hey, let's move Cody topside to Bugax. Let's try and play with, like, Ackerman moving around the map. It's about fighting, and this is the fighting that Infinity have now found. Well, Willer is hovering towards this bot side to make sure that Cody and Solid Snake don't get anything too crazy in their ideas. Cody did pick up two kills in that last fight, finished up the Luden's Tempest. They are still in behind in gold. Infinity are still playing catch up, but it's the moments like this that maybe you're going to set up for success. The curse of the stab, bullet time, death, almost go down. Ackerman not quite in there though, almost falls to the turret. There's going to be the ultimate coming in. Ackerman, <gasps> oh, just about stays alive, and that's going to be enough to keep him going. Death needs to arcane shift away as Cody picking up these cleanses, keeping himself irrelevant in these fights. The thing is though Infinity commit to bot side with the Rift Herald don't get terror commit to mid don't get the play and Chovy's pushing in top side he's poking out book X with the range discrepancy and it'll actually be Homwa who end up with a terror when all is said and done so despite the proactive plays from Infinity it's Homwa who are winning on map stakes it's the execution it's being able to convert those plays into those kills into those turrets into those objectives doesn't quite hit the mark here for Infinity and they are committing quite a lot, and you can see the ideas are there, but like you said, the execution itself just needs to be tightened up just a tad. And it's unfortunate, right? Because we kind of got hyped for Infinity. We saw that team fight, we thought maybe, just maybe they can, but Hummel again, taking the step back. They are so good at slowing down the pace of the game, making sure that they're the ones that now can... Okay, trophy has got topside. We're in position with Willer to stop any potential plays for Infinity. So you consistently have Hamwa in positions to trade up. And now, with the commitment from to the topside with Bugax and with Ackerman, Willer's just free to take the dragon for himself. Yeah, takes himself the dragon. This should be the turret going over, though, in favor of Infinity Esports. That will be a nice little bit of gold. So you're trading power now for power later. That's just generally how you want to go for this. And finally, we are seeing them look to trade in, trade up if they can, as we look to see maybe they can get a blue buff out of it as well. The dragon taking a little bit longer, I imagine, than most anticipated, but Salas like just realizing there that the Chobi's not alone. Yeah, this might be a bit greedy, though, because when you look at where, like, Bugax is right now, he kind of needs the reset, so you can have Cody dress onto this bottom lane. It means that if I'm humble, I'm kind of looking at this mid lane going, hey, look, are we capable of making a play? Morgan rotating over. Not going to be looking for the dive, though, as Chovy is just going to collect that top wave and Hummel take it a little bit slower. Although, I say that, Willer and Morgan moving into position. They know exactly where everyone is. They're putting pings down. They're going to see if they can get this one. Morgan looking for the flank. Cody off to the side. Does he know that everyone's there? I don't think he does. He's going to burst in and get bursted out. Actually lands the sleep onto the one person who could stun him up. Very lucky there. Infinity get away with just a little bit of a, sm a smack on the wrist. Yeah, not going to be able to burn any summoner spells. And Infinity now get the recess that they need to hold on to this mid lane turret. But Hummer are not letting up. They are not, but Hummel got to respect. That is still a two and a half item Zoe with the distance on the paddle star. You get so much. Ackerman, Ackerman goes in. He stops Chovy, and Chovy has been taken out. He gets his Emperor Divide out, but when you're locked in place, there's nothing you can do. Willer forced to flash away, and Han will lie for heading for the hills. And they knew that Ackerman was there. He was spotted on wards coming in, but still, he manages to get the great setup and at least get one pick in favor of Han while ease some of that pressure. And the gold lead that was ballooning Penguin is slowly starting to turn around. It's whittling down. It was 4k, then one fight. It was 3k. Now in an extra fight, it's 2k. This is where the game starts to get a little bit shaky for Hanwha Life, and this is exactly what we talk about for them. They take things slow, but if you're too slow, you're just going to get caught out. And this is exactly what we saw in Game 4 and Game 5 of the LLA Grand Finals. Infinity fall behind, but these team fights, these moments to make the picks happen was what drew them back from the brink. And now against Hanwha, Infinity are looking to repeat history and see if they can take down one of the playing favorites. And of course, we're always going to get excited for underdog, underdog stories. We're Irish. We are consistently <laughs> underdog stories, but it is still in Hanwha Life's hands. They still have a gold lead. They still have the dragon lead and they still have plenty of tools in them, but it is these miss, you know, executions, these missteps, these small little moments of getting caught out that you're kind of questioning like, 
Are they able to do it? Can they do it? They need to show us they can. And this is why I want to see Hamwa take it slow. You don't need to force the pace. Let his ear scale. Let your let death come into the picture as well. But as I say, that looks like they're trying once more, but Infinity collapse. Infinity are around. They will lose tier one in mid. So get a trouble bubble landing on the Chovy in any other situation that would have been very detrimental to his health. But Chovy was surrounded by loved ones and was able to keep himself alive. It's Hamwa doing a nice job of like again pushing it sideways and then starting to rotate in. But this is the repeat here, right? Ackerman, him. they see him, right? But they're just like, okay, well, we're totally fine. Chovy steps up that bit too far, and this is the power of this new Mumu, right? You get one lockdown, the CC comes through, and then you always have that second band of Tosh if you need it as well. White Lotus doing so much damage over the back of it as well, and a really solid pick from Infinity. I see the perfect flash there from Miller. If he does not flash that, he ends up getting caught out again. You can see Bogax getting a little bit of extra time now into this uh, side lane, having a little bit of a better time now, has the Collector alongside the Immortal Shield Bow, so trading more effectively into these side lanes, and this Renekton is slowly starting to become a little less relevant as we get into these later team fights. Yeah, the big thing that you want to try and play here is Homo is like, okay, let's get a little bit more scaling on Chovy. We can play these late game team fights where we've got a little bit of range and try and like stop Ackerman from getting in because if Ackerman can set up for these big team fights, it's very hard for Hamad to reset, especially if like someone like Chovy or Deft end up got caught up in that kind of CC chain that we're seeing coming through from Infinity. A minute or just over it on for the next Drake to spawn. I will put Hanwha live onto it. As we can see now, Solid Snake, a little bit of trouble there. Going to get himself the Blast Cone out, and Ackerman able to get him to safety. But with everyone committing to that try and get that pick, it means that Tier 1 in mid definitely going to fall. Infinity trading up. This is looking like Hanwha. I won't say desperate just yet, but definitely looking a little bit more opportunistic when they didn't really need to. Yeah, and you can make this like quick reset now as Infinity that uh, you're seeing from Ackerman. Come back out, get mid push, collapse onto the bot lane with Bug Act, get him control over the spot lane as well. So, I mean, for Infinity, you've got a very distinct game plan as to how you can play it, but you look at Hamwa also looking for these quick resets, seeing if they can come out and contest that mid wave and stop Infinity from trying to find pressure onto the bottom side of the map. Now, I can see now with Hanwha Life, they have the Chovy mid lane up at the top side. He is very, very close to getting himself his, rabbit for, uh, his Rabadon's death cap. There is a TP coming in, though. It's going to be Cody just covering up that mid lane, but they are waiting to see if they can just catch somebody out. There's an exhaust going down on the Vista. Maybe they're looking for a little bit of a take. White Lotus takes a little bit of a hit, and the TP's going to be committed. That's going to be Chovy coming in. White Lotus has to get himself out. There's a solar flare. Vista is still very tanky. Vista is still very healthy. They land on the death as Solid Snake tries to take him down, but Cody is there, and Hanwha Life punished the over extension they punish the mistake in infinity you gotta get out you gotta try and survive you cannot lose anymore or they will take everything and that is a potential third dragon as well for Hamwa alongside this terror bug axe trying to clear out the wave which he will just manage to do but you can just back up well, actually they don't even they're just willing to tank this yeah they're willing to tank it up might be a little bit risky now that the tower is at full power but they'll back away they get a dragon and that was why Hanwa life you cannot just assume you're going to be able to take them down because you're just investing so much onto such a tanky leona didn't even have to use flash yeah, I mean, trying to pick off the Leona is never going to be a good shout. And I mean, Hamwa, rightfully so, punish. And um, big thing as well, Infinity not quite getting all their um, eggs in the one basket, we'll say, where a bit of a messy fight. So Hamwa get the picks, they get themselves back control of the map, and they will get themselves the third dragon. And now, especially when you're looking at a Rabadon's death cap who completed soon for the Azir, that's going to be a major issue. But watch here, right? So we get the potential pick onto Vista, but I want to keep your eyes on White Lotus's ult here, because unfortunately he positioned so far back because of Deft, he actually doesn't get the best of bullet times. Deft doing a really good job of zoning out this misfortune. So bullet times hitting onto no one, Willer is able to come in, Morgan's able to come in. It's just not enough damage left from the kind of the big wombo we were talking about for Infinity. Yeah, it's just a bit reaching there from Infinity. Yeah. You didn't have to try and force that play. You didn't have to try and make it work for you. You had options, and even this Bork bug axe into Morgan, he's he's winning the side lane, as we can now see an invest in, into this jungler to try to catch him out. Solid Slake is dead. That's just an easy, quick kill, and Hanwha Life starting to pick up the pace. And, I mean, Baron's on the cards as well now, right? 26 minutes into the game. You've got a 3k goal lead at Azir with a rabbit on deck cap. That will not stand for very long as Bugax is still trying to deal with this bot lane turret. You gotta be a little bit careful though. Willer will have to be the sole tank of this. As you can see now, Vista off to the side. They will have the true shot barrage land on the three people to help pepper them down. This Baron is not exactly quick. Deft and Vista are the ones <laughs> keeping him away. And oh my lord, Deft! That is just so disgusting being able to go that far aggressive and no, he's gonna be able to get the kill. Yeah, I mean, Deft's feeling himself right now. Divine Sun the Muramana completed. He is going to be pumping out damage, and unfortunately, Cody wasn't really expecting it. Now, you get the pick, you get the Baron, Depth. 
Should be fine here. Uh, he has the flash. There is a little bit of a slow. They're trying to jump on top of him, but there's the Immortal Shield bow popped, and Death says, cool, I know I have my team lift me. I know that Morgan's on the bot side, so I gotta move forward. And with this Baron power play from Red Bull, it's gonna be absolutely huge for Hanwha to really solidify themselves forward. Yeah, big brother Morgan was in the wings, so Death feeling a little bit more uh, confident there to Arcane Shift <laughs> forward. But honestly, you can see, right, Frozen Heart does so much in this uh, style of composition, because Bugax can't really get through you. White Lotus, Solid Snake, gonna have a really rough time as well. So you're pretty much free to play more aggressive. And unfortunately, Infinity, we started to get the ball rolling, but Hanwha have done an exceptional job of shutting that down, finding these picks and plays, and now they're firmly in control with that Red Bull Baron power play. Exactly, you can never count these guys out. Of course, 14 from the LCK, the LCK, the most successful region at the World Championships. Never to be underestimated, be it first or fourth, you have to give them respect. And Infinity sadly just overreaching, maybe saw an opportunity that wasn't there and really getting hard punished right now, as we can see, just pushing forward with the Red Bull Baron power play and getting themselves more and more of these standing turrets. Yeah, Infinity trying to play off three waves here. Cody was up in that top side, so Homar just like, cool, we have numbers advantage but we can hard force this with the Baron, and now they're gonna start sieging with double cannons here with the Baron. Morgan gonna move up towards that mid lane as well, just to try and buff them up, make sure they can keep the pressure on, spread Infinity Esports thin. Infinity are gonna look for a pick, it's not really the one they wanted, so they're not gonna fully commit to it, they're gonna try and maybe get a little bit of poke, but nothing else. Bugax is pushing back Morgan, but that turret is falling, and then the 4v4, Infinity can't hold him, Bugax trying to go for the 1v1 against Rekton, but you're against minions right now, he's gonna get blocked, and he's not gonna be able to do it at all, he's gonna have to back himself away, because the rest of Hanwha is up, it's coming up from his base! But look at the health bars on Infinity, they're actually being cut off from their own base as Humble now get bought. They're gonna get mid and it's falling apart for Infinity. It is, and Morgan's gonna find Bugax. He's not gonna be able to get himself back to base to try and defend, and now they're just gonna try and trade each other's lives. They won't be able to get it, but Hanwha Life, they smell blood. They know there's an incredibly low member of Infinity somewhere. They have got the true shot barrage, but they're not going to commit it. He will leave with his life with the base in shambles. I mean, Hanwha know what the next prize is, right? A minute and a half until the dragon. They're gonna reset it, pushing waves, just double down on the vision control that they've already established that you can see Infinity trying to clear out now. And then either you fight Ocean Soul as Infinity or you just end up losing it with double minion waves and also Homa just being able to, or sorry, double super minion waves and Homa being able to commit to the top side. The, the last nail in the coffin starting to fall slowly for Infinity here. It's a little bit of a hard spot to be in to try and fight out of. You need to try and find depth. You need to try and find Chovy. They are your two only options for the next team fight. You need to blow them up, and then you have a chance. Then you're given an opportunity to maybe get some more time for your inhibitors. Maybe look to try and push out these side waves. But I don't think Han was going to let you have it. They're just too good at these, you know, these positions to close out. And I mean, you've kind of lost the uh, the moment. Unless you can have Bugax, massive ultimate alongside like Ackerman and White Lotus to like annihilate both Chovy nice. and Deft, you're just kind of out of time. Yeah, they're gonna get tier two in the top side. So five members of Infinity, but you got Chovy and Morgan in the top side. You got the rest of Hanwha hovering in the red side jungle. So you know you are safe to go for this. Deft will get drowsy. Morgan's a little bit isolated away from his team and they will try and commit onto it. This should be the last fight coming in. So we do get the stuns down. It's double cleanse used as Deft gets himself out. He had himself a QSS and he had himself a cleanse so he keeps himself alive the base is 12 and truly drawn hung and quartered as they now look to try and find the last fight infinity throwing everything at the wall they just got this completely separated they just can't finish off the health bars they're just so close but yet so far white lotus trying his very best but it is in fact bugax who gets himself a double kill but death knows the rest of the team are low he knows they're going for there's the stone there's the kills is it a triple it's not quite able to happen death keeps himself alive Alive. And while all this is happening, Chovy's ended the game! Chovy's just chilling. He's like, yeah, guys, just keep him busy. I've got this. I'm gonna finish off this. Uh, I mean, Bugax finally will fall to Morgan's hands as the base will do likewise to Chovy. It was a valiant last effort from Infinity, but Hanwha Life will get themselves onto the win sheet. They will find themselves a win against the LLA number one team as there's the ace coming in. Sniped off to the side, Chovy ends the game. Hanwha Life on the board. And a confident win coming through from Hanwha Life. What a strong performance coming through in those early stages. We got to see some you know, picks coming back from Infinity, but certainly you can see Hanwha put their foot down like, we're having none of this. Straight back to basic, lads. Let's close this one. Yeah, and again, 
I think Infinity can take a lot of pride in that performance. They definitely showed off the power and the potency of that, you know, Curse of the Sad bullet time, having those big AoEs, but it just wasn't enough. They fell too far behind. They weren't able to keep keeping tempo almost with Hanma. And then once they actually went for that last fight, they still got two kills, which was great, but you're too far behind. Yeah, I think the big one here was just how well Hanma were able to play the map, right? They just show that, hey, look, Infinity, we've, they've overcommitted on one side of the map. We'll go and take others elsewhere. Even when you got moments where maybe you had that overcommitment coming through from Hanwha, Infinity just didn't know what to do with that time. So certainly Hanwha showing that, honestly, they're just a better team when it comes towards maps. And then also having that late game scaling was just kind of the cherry on top. Yeah, it was the pretty much the cherry on top, like I said, the the insurance, if you will, to say, look, we have an Ezreal, we have an Azir, we know that if this goes to 30, 35 minutes, we are just going to be stronger unless you can get that kind of setup for you. But again and again, we do see the the LCK coming back. You know, it was a tough loss. It was very, very close in the first one. They were able to get themselves on the board. And honestly, I think this is a, a good start here for Chovy and for Hanwha Life as a whole. Yeah, and I think kind of um, both games that we've seen now from Hanwha, they've been very good at getting their own kind of play style, right? Play this nice slow, ca well, I don't want to say casual, but very slow-paced game where they're like, cool, we can start to play at the map. It's something that we saw a lot from the regionals, and it looked brilliant. It really, really did. And every second counts. And thanks to the reliable Cisco network, Infinity Esports got a great setup in the team fight around the Rift Herald. Yeah, and this was just such a gorgeous play coming through where honestly <laughs> got a little bit of a um a question mark on Homo where they like thought, okay, we've kind of got this, but Willer overextending there as Solid Snake goes in and Infinity just kind of go, right, we can actually do this. Bug Axe is in a great spot. So they come down and this was the moment where we start to see some of the turnaround plays for Infinity. But unfortunately later on in the game it just wasn't enough. But at least we still get to see that Infinity, the LLA has that fight in them, even if they fall behind. The potential is there, and I gotta shout out Cody on this one right now, was just constantly pushing forward and forward and didn't miss a beat, got chucked over the wall by the Emperor's Divide and was like, cool, where's the next one? <laughs> Straight <laughs> off the bat, going into something as soon as he possibly could. And I guess that's gonna be, you know, see how they can bump back from this. It's obviously, you know, day one, they still have time, but, you know, time is a little bit running out, but we'll see, we'll see how they're able to go for it. Yeah, I think. For LLA, a little bit unfortunate, 0-2. I think we got to see some of what they wanted to bring to the table, those big fights, those skirmishes as well, looking good. But unfortunately, up against Hanwha, the LCK rep too strong. Yeah, they are a little bit too strong. But coming up next, we are looking forward to Unicorns of Love versus the LJL's Detonation Focus Me, two mainstays on the international stage. And as we go to break, we let's take a look at the beautiful scenes from our host country, Iceland.